Welcome to the Timken Rail Maintenance Series. Today, we're going to talk about how to perform an AAR Rule 36 hand roll inspection of a journal bearing. Always wear your personal protective equipment for the job. This can include, but is not limited to, steel toe boots, safety glasses, and gloves. Also, always follow the standard safety practices established by your employer. What we will be discussing is Rule 36, Part E, Sections 5 and 6, found in the AAR Field Manual. A hand roll inspection is an important part of a good rail maintenance program and should always be performed if you have lifted the truck or bogey off of the wheel set. Hand roll inspections are important to identify damaged portions of the cup raceway, rollers, and cone raceway. By performing this inspection, you may be able to identify damages like these within the bearing before it can cause a costly wayside removal. Start by placing your hands 180 degrees apart and pull the cup such that the outer cone is seated and rotate in one direction for two full revolutions. Then move your hands to the front of the bearing cup 180 degrees apart and push the bearing cup. Then rotate again for two full revolutions. After hand rolling the bearing, rotate the axle 120 degrees. This will place a new portion of the cone raceway in the load zone for a hand roll inspection. Next, rotate the axle a second time. This will move the last uninspected portion of the cone raceway into the load zone. When hand rolling a bearing, we are feeling for the roughness. We are not listening for it. As pieces break off of the load bearing surfaces, they contaminate the lubricant and will get caught between the rollers and the cage. This may feel like a catch or a roughness in the rotation. If roughness can be felt, then we recommend that the wheel set be removed from service. If no roughness can be felt, then continue the inspection by checking the mounted end play. A cold day or heavy contact and grease seals can increase rolling torque and make it stiff or difficult to rotate. This is not an indication of bearing damages. Some common mistakes are made during these inspections, like listening for damages instead of feeling, performing a foot roll inspection instead of a hand roll inspection, and rapidly oscillating the bearing back and forth. You are not listening for damage. You are feeling for damage within the bearing, not listening. Always perform a hand roll inspection with your hands, not your feet. A foot inspection will not give you any accurate insight to the condition of the bearing. You may hear the rollers click as they enter and exit the load zone and mistake that for damage. Take care to rotate the bearing in one direction only. Do not oscillate the bearing. The rollers at the 6 o'clock position are not loaded, and if you oscillate, you might feel or hear those rollers click against the cone assembly cage as they change direction and mistake that for damage. While the wheel set is out from under the car, you should take the time to check the mounted end play of the bearing. This is a measurement of the internal clearance that a bearing needs to operate. You should always rotate the bearing before measuring. If the rollers aren't seated against the cone rib, then you will not get an accurate measurement of the mounted end play of the bearing. Rolling the bearing causes the rollers to move up the cone raceway and allow full axial motion of the bearing cup. The AAR states you can use a metal tape measure to measure mounted end play, but we strongly recommend the use of a dial indicator, which will give you a more precise measurement. Place a dial indicator with a magnetic base on the bearing cup, pressing the indicator stem against the wheel hub. Then push the bearing cup towards the wheel 
and zero out your indicator. Pull the bearing cup towards the end cap. Note the travel of the indicator needle to determine the amount of end play of the bearing cup. Per Rule 36 of the AAR Field Manual, if the value is greater than 1 16th of an inch, the bearing should be removed from service. Excessive mounted end play can be the result of damages within the bearing, effectively reducing the load zone and increasing bearing fatigue. As the end play increases, the life of the bearing is reduced. The bearing should be removed if the mounted end play is zero and cannot easily be rotated by hand. This method can be used for most of our AP bearing rail applications, including freight, locomotive, and passenger. While the bearing is available, it is a good opportunity to inspect for other causes of removal, such as welding damage, loose or missing cap screws, grease seal damage, or a loose backing ring. If you have any questions or are interested in on-site training for your team, contact your Timken Service Engineer.